All right. All right. We got Kanan on the docket. Good old Kanan, 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 Kanan. All right. Now, if you haven't watched the episode, it was an intense episode. I did want a little more action, but it works because, let's be real, we don't want this to be over the top. Me, personally, I would take it over the top just for the finale. I would give you guys nine episodes of straightness, but in the finale, I'm about to turn it up a notch. But the reason I respect it is because what Kanan had going on, Kanan is a 16-year-old boy. Remember, Jukebox is 18. That means Kanan is 16. He turned 17 in August. This is still during the school year. So Kanan is 16 years old. So we got to look at it as a 16-year-old. The boy isn't fully developed. Now, what I can say is Kanan reminds me at 16. Well, let me not to not you know, not to not not to put my personal information out there. I mean, 16 was the year I lost it. So you know what I mean? So where Kanan is at, he was a little more advanced than I was. Well, wait, let me see. No, because I was 15. 16 was my junior year. So it was going into my junior year. I go, yo, oh, so I was 15. So I was 15. I was a year ahead of Kanan. All right. But like Kanan got Crystal. I follow Crystal on Instagram. Crystal's way better. Like, I'm just gonna be real with you. Crystal's way better than what I was dealing with with, you know what I'm saying, when I was growing up. So Kanan's over here and he's knocking Crystal down. Now we know him and Crystal been fucking around for a little bit. And that's because he used to mess with Aisha. But Aisha's a bopper. And what a bopper means she bopping around the city. It means she gonna fuck with Kanan. She's going to fuck with Famous. She's going to fuck with Juke. She's a bopper. Well, Chris is over here, and she's been getting knocked down by Kanan. And it's nothing better than having a solid one on your team, especially if you got a nice one on your team. You always want to build your roster and have, like, at least one or two. Now, when you start getting into two or three, that's when you're going to start having mistakes. And that's when we're going to bring you on to Monday Mistakes. When you start having two or three bad ones on the roster, that's when you're fucking up. Now, if you can manage one or two, after you get to like three, that's just too much to be on your plate. Now, the most I ever had at one time was like three. Well, two and a half. Because the other one, yeah, but, but that's neither here or there. Kanan got Crystal. Crystal ain't got much going for herself just for the simple fact that butter is burnt toast at this point. Now, I got your super chat. I'm going to talk about the super I got your super chat. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. Now, Crystal is in burnt toast, meaning there's no end goal. There's nothing that's ever going to come out of that. Now, this is what this is what gets me. So, fellas, always remember this when you're out here slaying because this is what it is. Well, Crystal is over here, and she's getting cheeks clapped. I know this sounds a little vulgar, so if you're under the age of 17, because yeah, YouTube says 17, hey, she goes over here, lets Kanan raw dog, and then after Kanan gets done raw dogging, she says, hey, are we going together? Are we like boyfriend and girlfriend? Kanan's like, no, we just kicking it. We ain't going steady. We just be fooling around. Shout out to Rocco. You know what I mean? Even though I fuck with Future, you know what I'm saying? Free band game. You know what I'm saying? It's big bro, the flyest nigga on earth. But what she's trying to do is pull the okie doke on Kanan. But we know on my channel, the Moets, we do the okie doke. We don't get hit with the okie doke. We do the okie doke. We are the okie dokeyers. They are the okie dokeys. We never, ever get hit with the okie doke because I give you guys the goddamn blueprint on what needs to be done. Well, Kanan wakes up and he hits the bleasy talk about, no, we just kicking it. We just fooling around. She waits. She waits and says, okay, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Kanan says, no, we just kicking it. What does she say? Well, I'm late. Well, Kanan's response should have been, I had the Jimmy on extra tight. Word to minister society. I had the Jimmy on extra tight, so I know it ain't mine. And plus, you looking at a girl like Crystal, 
very, very attractive. Now, for fellas, maybe, maybe it's just me, but for fellas, most of the time we just know, like, all right, cool. This one is bad. This one is bad. I know I'm giving away too much of the game. Mo, chill, chill, chill. Don't give up too much of the game. But we know when we get a woman that's too bad, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You fucking with me. So I know you fucking with a lot of other niggas. I'm just saying that it is what it is. So Kanan hits the bleasy because he already told her. Yeah, I'm just trying to blaze this motherfucker up. I ain't trying to talk about none of that bullshit. So she waits till she gets knocked down the second time to say, hey, I'm up here this late. She should have told this nigga before that, but she didn't because you know how the game goes. She know young Kanan. She know young Kanan's out here getting money. Kanan's out here living the life. Imagine. So for me, from 16 to 17, I ain't had no bankroll. I told you guys, I tried my I tried my hand and you know what I'm saying, slang it. I ended up getting robbed and I realized this was not the game for me. So I got robbed when I was 16 years old. I realized that wasn't the game for me. I was more of a consumer, not a seller. So I never got back in the seller. But once I turned 18, I got my federal job and I started traveling. I started getting I started getting checks. I told you guys I was getting fifteen hundred a month for the minimum fifteen hundred a month for thirty days tax free per diem. But if I went to like D.C. or something, they give me thirty five hundred. So I'm walking around at eighteen years old, thirty five hundred on your boy, five thousand cash on your boy. So for me, I started to slim up. Everybody knew I was a little fat fuck until I was goddamn <laughs> until my junior year when I shot up. So I went from like 5'4 my junior year to 5'8, and then my senior year, 5'8 to 6 foot. So I like I kind of sprouted up. I wasn't too tall, but yeah, you know, and I started getting a little bit of money when I started working the federal shit. But one thing you realize, once you start getting these bad ones, you know what I mean? Kanan looking at it when he was fucking with Aisha, no problems. Aisha looked good. Aisha is a beautiful woman, but Aisha ain't crystal. Remember, Aisha was just, who was Aisha? The girl next door? Chewbox is a tomboy? Who was the diva? Crystal. So everything I'm saying is valid. You can apply this to real life. And I'm, I appreciate raising Kanan for doing this. Now, Kanan was getting a little bit of money, right? Kanan was getting a little bit of money. Crystal seen that this nigga was getting money. So she like, fuck it. Uh, Kanan, I, uh, I'm a little late. Let me fuck with you. Well, it looks like Kanan let her ass down a little softly. Killing me softly with his words, telling my whole life with his words, killing my whole life. Because when Famous showed up, she's on the couch crying. That means Kanan must have told her, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Like I said, all I'm telling y'all is the story. I ain't making none of this up. I ain't making none of this up. All I'm all I can do is tell you the story. So Crystal talking about are we going together? Like, why are we going together? We just kicking it. We ain't going steady. Matter of fact, let me put them lyrics up for y'all so y'all know what I'm talking about. Lyrics. So what I'm gonna do is break this down for you guys, so you guys can understand. I know, I know, we talking about power. Hold on, where are we at? So if you look at these lyrics, this is way back in the day. I think it's like 2006, 2010. All right. So if you look at these lyrics, this is exactly what Kanan is going through. Yeah, my name is Kanan, and I'm an addict. I'm addicted to money. I love fast cars. I love jewelry. I love ussy, but I don't love these women. 
I don't know what it is about me. I don't know. That's just something that I just, I just can't do it. I just can't help it. Know what I mean? I refuse to be in a community relationship because I just, I just don't like it. I don't like that ish and know what I mean. I'm sorry. Now, when you go into the song, hey, we ain't going steady. We just be fucking around. Yeah, this says great, but damn, baby, we just fucking ran. Girl, you got me high, popping up at my spy. You out your damn mind. What you fuck with thought? We just think if we fucking ram. Now, listen. You been misinformed. Sorry if I read you wrong. I told you what you wanted to hear. Sorry if I led you on. Yeah, the ushy good, girl, I ain't gonna lie. But if you looking for a dude, girl, I ain't your guy. I'm not the... I'm not going to come around every other day. I'm not going to talk to you on the phone all the time. You fucking stalker, you. Look, I ain't trying to be rude. I ain't trying to eat your food. I ain't going to keep it funky with you, girl. We ain't that cool. Listen, we just be cool in it. We ain't going steady. Just hit my phone when you want to play. Girl, you know I'm ready. We just be fucking round. Girl, you know better. You ain't my main squeeze. It ain't like we go together. It ain't like we go together. You just my little buddy. We ain't going steady. Girl, we just be fucking round. We ain't going steady. So if you look at the lyrics, and apply it to your everyday life, you'll understand what these niggas is saying. You just my fun girl. And me and you know better. We just be kicking it. What can it say? We just be kicking it. It ain't like we go together. I'm a chill for a few. Stay around for a second. Time is of the essence. No time like the presence. Do a little score. Or you could do a little chore. We can make a movie. Then I'm going to keep it moving. It ain't you, baby. It's me. After we get through, just leave me alone. Hey, she texting me like crazy. Sending me them smiley faces. I'm your boyfriend number two. Just here to pleasure you. I need a naughty girl. Fun girl like to play. A real party girl. Just to cool with. Whenever you ready to play, just hit my phone. I'm ready. But don't be catching feelings, baby. We ain't going steady. You see, this is what Rocco said in 2010. This is what Rocco said in 2010. So imagine how my nigga Kanan is feeling in 1999. We just be kicking it. We ain't going steady. I'm always going to relate the music to the life. See? Art emulates life. Music is art. So that's why they're trying to get lyrics dismissed from the Young Thug case. But I mean, we talking political now. But I'm just saying, if you apply this to your everyday life, brothers, then you'll go further. But Kanan knows that he's trying to blaze up a bleasy. This chick let him knock her down again. If you were really worried about your period coming up late, then why would you let me knock you down again? If you were actually late, why are you letting me knock you down again?
if you are late. I need I need one I I need some women to answer this question for me. If you are late, <laughs> Belisha said, "Well, she can't get pregnant. <laughs> she can't get more pregnant." <laughs> See, a hey, that's why I fuck with Belisha. She don't give a damn. She gonna keep it real. Like, all right. So. All right, hold on. I let me let me let me ask this. I know this. I know this is random. I know this is random. So, if she's already late, if she gets not, I I, I just want to know, like you know, what I'm saying where we at with this. If she's already late and she gets knocked down again, it doesn't really matter because she's late, right? So why is it a bad like why why is there a stigmatism to like? I, I don't want to say it because it, it sounds bad, but you know me, I don't give a fuck because it doesn't apply to me, but it applies to me. So if she's already late, she can't get pregnant again. She's already pregnant. Well, technically she can get pregnant again because I've heard um, one of my homegirls in the UK, she got pregnant on the outside of the, uh, what is that, outside of the ovary? She did get pregnant on the, like the outside of the ovary, so I, I know about that. But so if she's already late, she can't get pregnant again. Why is there a stigmatism of niggas like? Let's just say somebody's already like, 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 like I don't even know what that stage is called. But let's just say they already late. Why is there a stigmatism of dudes trying to knock them down? Then I mean, you're already like, I like that's what I want to know. Like, okay, if you already late, then if I'm approaching you, then, hey, what's up? What's happening? You are ready. It, like, it ain't like you can get more pregnant. That's what they told me. But now I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying in general. But I, I, I don't be one. I, I be one. Of, I'm curious to know all that stuff, man. I mean, me personally, I don't give a fuck. Like me, if a chick tell me she's pregnant, I'm like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with you. But uh, six weeks after you had that baby, holla at your nigga, you know what I mean? Especially if you ain't with your baby. If you leave in the hospital with just your mama or your girlfriend, like your, your homegirl, yeah, go ahead and hit me up then. Because I know in six weeks, you have a babysitter. Holla at your boy, man, you know what I mean? But let's get back to the topic, man. Well, anyway, Crystal was in the crib crying. Famous pulls up. You know, I'm just trying to figure out for everybody. I don't. I stay in my house, man. I don't, I don't embark on none of this shit. I stay in my house. If I ain't traveling, I really don't give a fuck what's going on in the real world. I deal with me and that's it. But famous. Yo, K, you in there? K, open up the door, man. What's up? K. Remember, this is famous as apartment. Now K opens the way. What the fuck, man? He's like, hey, bro, 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 I gotta talk to you, man. What the, what the fuck is going on, famous? Said, dog, you ain't here, man. Them niggas didn't roll on, uh, on, on, on your mama. I'm about to say they rolled on me, but niggas ain't rolling on me, nigga. I got that motherfucking Thule on me, but yeah, they didn't roll on your mama. Now, Crystal was in here, Crystal in here crying. I remember one time, this is a true story. I don't really want to divulge this information, but I do want to divulge this information because fuck her. But one time. I ain't going to go into too much detail because I know this could be brought up against me later on. And, you know, I'll be the bad guy, even though I was a good guy. But she hit me up. Hey, we got to talk. Like, talk about what? She said, I need to come over there and talk to you. So she came over and talked to me. So I'm like, what's going on? Well, you know, I think I'm late. So a nigga like me, I'm. I, she telling me she late. I'm like, okay. Well, yeah. I'm not late. I, I'm about to be on work tomorrow. You know what I mean? I, I, I got work tomorrow. I'm going to be on time tomorrow. I know I'm not late. Long story short, I told her, I'm like, hey, man, whatever nigga you done fucked with, that, hey, don't bring that bullshit around here. Don't, no, hey, go talk to that nigga about that shit. Don't bring that shit over here to me. 
I think I'm late. Well, what are you telling me you late for? I know for sure. I, I know for sure a nigga like me is on time. I know it ain't me. Don't bring that bullshit over. She crying. She had my crib crying. I'm like, hey, man, you can get the fuck out of my house with that shit. I kicked her the fuck out of my house. Turn out. <laughs> I was a thousand percent right. That motherfucker talking about, like, what the fuck you coming over here for? I know, hey, you need to go holler at whatever other niggas you was fucking with. Come on to my, hey, I'm going to tell you straight up. One thing about me, I got lawyer money on deck, nigga. I, I'm fighting every case. Come over to my shit crying like, no, I'm going to feel sorry. But I don't give a fuck what you crying about. You ain't get the fuck out of my house with that bullshit. She came over crying. Hey, you, hey, hey, get your ass on somewhere. That's a, that's a true story. And if y'all don't believe me, I got goddamn receipts. You know I keep them. I go get my other phone right now. I charge that bitch up. I show you all receipts. Fuck that. I keep all receipts. I, hey, we need to talk. I said, talk about what? Well, I'm late. Well, shit. <laughs> Your lateness don't got nothing to do with me because I'm a nigga that's on time. I, matter of fact, matter of fact, you should be able to sue a motherfucker. I should be at it. Matter of fact, I need to go see what the statute of limitation is on defamation of character. I need to go ahead and get a goddamn hundred thousand out of that motherfucker. And I ain't gonna say it, but I need to go get a hundred thousand out of that B. Fuck that. Matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna do in the morning. I'm gonna send an email to my mom and say, hey mom, I need you to notify some lawyers in the state of Georgia and uh See what the statute of limitation is because that's defamation of character right there. I got the text messages still. Lock that motherfucker on up. I need at least 150,000 cash. 150. Talk about I'm late. Get me over here. I got anxiety now. Now I can't talk to women. I can't talk to women without feeling nervous because of her. She motherfucking got my heart rate racing. Every time I talk to a beautiful woman, I get goddamn nervous, man. I got goddamn. Huh, huh. I'm nervous as a bitch now. Now I can't even matter of fact, I'm getting PTSD from just thinking about that shit. I ain't even think about, oh my God, I don't oh, I'm hurt now. Oh, oh no. My heart rate is elevated, y'all. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that's like 200 beats per second, right? There. I need to notify the local the FBI. Yeah, this is the FBI. Oh, yeah. Mom. No, 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 no. Fuck that shit. I don't know. We're gonna after we after we finish this cane the store. I'm calling my mama. I'm calling my mama. We're gonna bring her. We're gonna bring my mama on because y'all niggas think I'm playing. We about to sue some niggas. All right, fuck it. Kanan shows up. Well, famous shows up. Hey man, they didn't pull the drive by on your mama. We about to go get some money tonight. Fuck that. We trying to go for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Fuck all that shit. Motherfucking famous showed up. Man, they try to get at your mama. So Kanan, he didn't dipped out. Now when Kanan dipped out, he went to go talk to Ronnie. Now, when he talked to Ronnie, he's on some bullshit. He's standing on business. When I say bullshit, I mean bullshit in a good reason. Hey, Kano, what I mean, Ronnie, what the fuck you doing, dog? This is my mom, man. I told you not to fuck with my family, nigga. We business partners. We're supposed to be making plans together. The nigga Mo was over here running down the lyrics for us, and I ain't trying to hear none of them lyrics, nigga. You tried to slide on my mama, nigga. What's happening? That nigga Ronnie trying to stand on 10, talking about you, you always in the way we had to you out. Now, Scrap is like, nah, fuck that. Y'all niggas is on the same side because at the end of the day, Snaps needs these niggas to cooperate so he can get his money. Now, Kanan is looking at it like, hey, bro, you fucking me over, man, trying to get at my mom. But what he sees is a vulnerable spot. Now, Belicious told me to get loose and vulnerable. I don't get loose for nobody. I don't get vulnerable for nobody. I'm a real nigga from the day I wake up to the day I go to sleep. But, you know what I'm saying? I do have emotions, but neither here or there. She says, I ain't got no emotions. We heard that when she talked to the therapist earlier. So what she's hearing is like, listen, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my son. Whether that means going to get 500000 for Stefano. Kanan is like, hey, Ronnie, you fucking up. But at the same time, he realizes, he realizes what Mo's been saying. I don't be doing no talking like that. You know, I'm going to hold it. But everybody in the street, no famous, ain't about to go do no talking. Even Kanan knew that. But one thing I'll say about Kanan, even though this ain't his story, Kanan did stick up for famous because he was realizing that Ronnie's a little too aggressive. And that's going to play a part into Kanan's story with Ronnie a little bit later on. Three weeks ago, I'm predicting what the fuck is going on in the finale. Three weeks ago, I'm predicting what the hell is going on. Now, people think that 
Mo just be talking, but I apply my everyday life experience to what the hell is going on in these shows. It just it just happens. But everybody in the street, no famous, ain't about to go do no talking. Even Kanan knew that. But one thing I'll say about Kanan, even though this ain't his story, Kanan did stick up for famous because he was realizing that Ronnie's a little too aggressive. And that's gonna play a part into Kanan's story with Ronnie a little bit later on. Up for famous because he was realizing that Ronnie's a little too aggressive. Ronnie was a little too aggressive. That's going to play a role with Kanan and Ronnie in the future. Well, we in the future now. We in the future now. We in the future now. And Kanan tells him straight up, man, you don't know what the fuck I am. You don't know who I am. Well, from there, Kanan sets up the fake kidnapping. Alan said, I told you that uh, three weeks ago. Exactly. Hey, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the only person with this. I'm just saying I got the receipt showing that, hey, this is what the fuck I was thinking weeks ago. Y'all know at, at the end of season two, I mentioned unique being on top of the game and working with Kanan. Man, I've been, I've been, hey, I've been doing this shit since 2018. I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm saying I'm top 1,000. But what I'm saying is I make a lot of sense. I talk a lot of shit, but I make a lot of sense. And people discredit me. You know, they come over here and say, but I don't care about that because it's a TV show, so it really doesn't offend me, but. Now we got the fake kidnapping. But if you watch Kanan, I, I mentioned it earlier, but look, when you were watching Kanan, Kanan was looking around like, where they at, man? I'm waiting on them to come and pick me up. And when Kanan was getting kidnapped, this is just me, I, I promise you. Like, I thought something was up. I thought Kanan was just watching to make sure no one pulled up on him. But then it made me... When I was watching the episode, I was thinking that Kanan was making sure no one was pulling up on him. But let's be real. Someone tell me, how many ops does Kanan have? At this point right here, how many ops does Kanan have? Because that's what made me realize that Kanan did this setup on his own. How many people is Kanan beefing with in the streets? Someone give me an answer. Who do we know Kanan to be beefing with? Because when he's looking over his shoulder, he's looking back like, I said, what the fuck is this nigga doing? And then when the kidnapping, I'm about to say, oh, this nigga set up a kidnapping. Who is Kanan beefing with in the streets besides his mom? Look at Don, said zero. See, that's how I was looking at it. I peeped Kanan looking around. I was like, Okay, this nigga's looking around. My first thought was, okay, Kane is making sure ain't no one going to run up on him. But I was thinking, wait a minute. This is the season finale. We haven't heard or known anybody beefing with Kanan because he had protection from Ronnie and Snaps. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? Kanan over here. And then it made sense. Kanan set this shit up. It's little stuff like that, man. And that's why I pay so much attention. If you watch, does anyone know the name that's on the wall right there? Does anyone know the name of the person that's right there on the wall? Does anyone know the, the name of the person that's on the wall right there? Because I got the information. I know who his name is. Because I watched the episodes, man. I'm watching to see what the fuck is going on. He beefing with Famous. <laughs> hey, man. Famous, hold on. Famous is, uh, let me see. Famous is in jail at this point. Famous is already locked up. You'd already got Famous ass.
The dude's name on the wall is like Andre or Andrew. I think I got the picture of it. Andrew. So the dude on the wall's name is Andrew. I Man, I finally found my prescriptions, and it seemed like it seemed like I've been losing weight, man. These motherfuckers and damn glasses sliding off my face. I'm like, God damn! Every time I look down, these motherfuckers are sliding. I'm like, God damn! I need to gain some more weight. I've been losing weight, man. Yeah, Who is Andrew? Don't worry. Don't worry. Prediction video will be dropping. I'm going to let y'all know who Andrew is. That, A, I'm only grabbing screenshots for one reason and one reason only because I have something to do with it. I got something to do with it. I'll let you know who Andrew is. Now, Andrew is also one of the writers. I'm just gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give you like something like that. Andrew is like one of the writers, and he's one of the characters that y'all seen in like season one, but they just put him on the wall like that. So yeah, I, I'll do a video on it. I'll do a video on it. But yeah, so for me, I when I was watching the episode, I, I seen Kanan looking around, but when I seen Kanan looking around. I said, man, he ain't looking around because he don't have any ops. It's not like it's not like there's a young crew out here looking to get Kanan off the streets. Kanan's been running with Ronnie. He's been moving H. I got you, Brillo. I'm gonna drop the link. Kanan, Kanan's not beefing with no niggas at his age. Uh, what's the name? Freddie? Freddie gone. Famous got hit with the Thule on that one. You see what I'm saying? So for me. Watching it and then piecing it together after we seen, it, I was like, "Damn, Kanan was really looking, and it was right in front of our face that Kanan set this damn kidnapping up." But I knew something was up because I was, I was, I was telling myself, "I said, man, this nigga Kanan ain't beefing with nobody." Like the way Kanan is looking around, like when you walking down the street on a regular day, let's just say you at work. When you at work in your office, you walking down. Walking down the hallway, go to the bathroom. Niggas ain't niggas ain't looking like that. But when you out on the block, you got a bankroll on you. You walk around with 10, 15 bands on you. You got to be cautious. So for me seeing Kanan walking around looking like this, like this nigga not just like looking to his left, looking to his right. This nigga's turning over his shoulder. So I'm like, man, what the fuck is Kanan doing? They wouldn't have showed Kanan doing no shit like this. So I'm looking at it like... All right, what the fuck is he looking? Maybe because Rock got shot up, he's looking to see if anybody's after him. But I was like, man, this nigga ain't beefing with nobody. And the niggas that went to go get Rock, they will be on your side because they fuck with um, Ronnie. You see what I'm saying? So you got to apply to like some real life tactics to this shit. And that's how I was looking at it. I said, man, this nigga is kind of fidgety. He... I was like, man, this shit either he's... He's paranoid or some shit, or this nigga setting some shit up, waiting on him to drop. And then, if I'm getting kidnapped, I'm not about to say, Ronnie, put y'all up to this. Ronnie, no, nigga, I'm fighting for my life, nigga. Fuck you, bitch ass niggas. You see what I'm saying? If you ain't ever been jumped, then you don't know. You don't know what the fuck I'm talking about before. I told y'all I got my Flint 13s and my Jason Richardson jersey stolen off me. I got jumped. Niggas whooped my ass. Like, 
yeah, I got jumped. The nigga still whooped my ass. It's still considered an ass whooping. Like, I fought the nigga one-on-one. I whooped that nigga R.I.P. to him because they ended up killing that nigga. But, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to do with that. The nigga that killed him. So the, the guy that the guy that I fought that I was beefing with, I ended up whooping on him, but his homeboys jumped in. They stole my Flint 13s. That's when I got kicked in the side of my face. They stole my Flint 13s. They stole my Jason Richardson uh, Golden State jersey. But the guy that I fought, he ended up getting killed three years later because he was selling weed for for one. I'm not going to say his name. He was selling weed for one of the guys, the dude named. I ain't going to say the nigga name. But they ended up waiting outside of his house. They ran in his house. They killed him and shot his baby mama. Uh, oh, boy, ended up getting out like 10 years later. So, I mean, that's just Kansas City for you. So it's like. I mean, you know, I, I'm beefing with the niggas, but I'm seeing how Kanan is moving. I'm like, Kanan ain't beefing with nobody. So for Kanan to be turned around like that, I'm like, man, what the fuck is this nigga on? And then we see the robbery. If niggas is if niggas is trying to kidnap me and rob me, I'm not yelling out to, hey, man, Ronnie did this. No, I'm about to yell out. If anything, I'm yelling out the niggas that I know that are trying to kidnap me. I'm not yelling out some random nigga that ain't actually there. I knew Ronnie had something to do with it. So that's when I knew Kanan had something to do with this setup. But that's only because I've been into some like real life shit. So is is I don't know, man. Is maybe maybe it's different for like niggas that ain't ever been in nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe it's different when y'all were watching it. Y'all were looking at it like, okay, Kanan just looking around, make sure he's watching the back. But for me, I'm like, this nigga ain't beefing with nobody. And for him to say, I know Ronnie, I was like, man, something ain't right with that. Because if I'm getting kidnapped by some niggas that are my ops, I'm not about to say, oh, this person behind it. I'm about to call out the niggas that I see who's kidnapping me or fight for my life. Like, come on, man. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe that's just me. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's just how I'm looking at it from my perspective because you know, I've been in some bullshit. But they end up kidnapping Kanan. Hey, bro, I'm going to bring you on right when we finish up this Kanan shit. So they kidnap Kanan. And we know what happens from there. So it's pretty much open and closed. Rock shows up to the warehouse with his daddy. They got uh, $500,000 in cash. Now, he's trying to grab the money, but that doesn't even matter because it ain't got nothing to do with Kanan. But when they come inside, we find out that Ronnie and Kanan they kind of put this together behind the scenes. I wish we could have seen after Kanan talked to Ronnie at the uh, at the club. Hey, let's. Hey, look, I got a plan. I got a plan. Let's do this. I wish. I wish we would have been able to see that though. I, I'm be honest with you. That's one thing I want. Like this whole setup here, I wanted to see something along the lines of, hey, at least, hey, Ronnie. I can get rock. We can get her in one spot and we can get, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to see something like that, but we didn't. So, I mean, it is what it is. We can piece it together and it's all right with me. Now, rock shows up with the money, $500,000 in cash. $500,000 in cash. Plus they got to give up. They got to give up to, uh, they got to give up the connect. And the property and all the bullshit that they got. 20 restaurants. So when they show up, Ronnie's like, man, I can't, I can't give up what they want. We like, what the fuck? So Kana says, yeah, mother. Ain't nobody kidding now. Kanan, you don't know what you're doing. Kanan. Now we on Kanan's side. Kanan does what any real nigga would have done. I'm talking just point blank. Bow. So for me, seeing it from Kane's perspective, I said, damn, I commend this young man. We got to get this nigga Ronnie up out the way because Ronnie ain't making no decisions on behalf of the team. We supposed to be this. We supposed to be this. This. Us. Me and you. Cross, cross, and then cross because this is a confirm, cancel, confirm. You know what I mean? We cross, cross, cross. You know what I'm saying? Scouts honor, scouts honor, scouts honor. So for me, I'm looking at Kane and popping Ronnie. I'm like, damn, all right, bet. Bow. Take this nigga out. 
good because Kanan is my favorite character. Of course, this is raising Kanan. Why wouldn't he be? But we take Ronnie out. Ronnie talking about, man, we rich. And then I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to y'all. If I wrote this shit, I told y'all I want action. If I wrote this shit, Ronnie down. Now I got the two of them. Rock don't have a gun on her because she got patted down. Rock picks up Ronnie's gun. Before Rock picks up Ronnie's gun, I put my gun on Rock and Howard. I picked the bag up, 500,000. Y'all two niggas got to fight to the death. I'm looking at Rock and I'm looking at Howard with the Thule on both of them. Thule on both of them. Now I got the bag, 500,000 on my shoulders. I'm picking up the the Ronnie's gun. Now I got two Thule's. I got 500 on your boy. Matter of fact, I got one gun on you. I'm putting that motherfucker across the chest. Now I got two guns on you, and I ain't got to hold the bag. You niggas got to fight to the death. But I ain't letting them fight to the death. When old boys come through the door, bow, I'm shooting Marvin's bitch ass. Yeah, Marvin gone. Still got two Thule's on me. Rock Howard, they both sitting there. One of them niggas try to make a move. Bow! I'm shooting that bitch ass nigga too. Now there's one nigga left. Bow! Now there ain't no niggas left. Everybody's dying in this bitch. I got $500,000. I'm taking that motherfucker back to snap. And nigga, I'm in the dope game, nigga. Fuck Rock. Fuck Marvin. Fuck Howard. Fuck Ronnie, nigga. If I would have wrote this shit, that nigga Kanan would have came out of this bitch unscathed, nigga. I would have laid every single character down, nigga. Fuck Rock. Fuck Howard. Fuck Marvin. Y'all niggas then came up into my spot. I killed Ronnie. You niggas are trying to take this 500000 back to Stefano. Fuck Stefano. Fuck Rock. Fuck Marvin. Fuck Howard. Bow, bow, bow. Everybody dying in this bitch. Because, God damn it, y'all niggas underestimated my nigga Kanan. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see some real shit. That's what I wanted. I wanted to see Kanan lay some niggas down. You mean to tell me that Kanan put together this fake-ass kidnapping, he takes out Ronnie, and he just don't get no money, no nothing, and he just goes living with his mom as a regular, regular kid? Fuck that. Rock, you can take your monkey ass on home with this nigga Howard, but I'm taking that 500000 nigga. Fuck you. Fuck Stefano. You figure that shit out, nigga. I'm, man, if I would have wrote this shit, everybody would have been... Sl- man, fuck all that shit, dog. This is the fucking finale, nigga. Ain't nobody trying to see Kanan go back home and be the bitch-ass mama's boy that he been for three seasons. Ain't nobody trying to see that shit. I would have laid everyone down in this bitch. Man, that fine... Man, it's $500,000 on the floor. Yo, think I... Think I'm giving that money back to Rock? Man, fuck Rock. Fuck Marvin. Fuck Howard. Nigga, it's $500,000. I killed this nigga Ronnie. If I didn't kill Ronnie, you motherfuckers wouldn't be living. What you mean turn that $500,000 in? Nigga, fuck that shit, nigga. I put this plan together. Kane has set up everybody so everybody can live. Now he got to go live with Rock and be a son with a curfew. Man, that don't sound like no winning shit to me. Fuck Rock. Rock just killed this nigga's daddy. Ain't no one said one motherfucking thing about Rock killing this nigga's daddy. His dad, his father, who tried to be there for him, who tried to get him out of the dope game. No one said anything. 
She killed this nigga's dad for no fucking reason when he was trying to save her and her bitch ass son, Kanan. But this is Kanan's story, so I ain't gonna call that nigga no bitch ass nigga. But ain't no one say nothing. That's fucked up. I would have had this nigga Kanan get that 500000 and told Rock figure the fuck out because all the bullshit you put me through, fuck you, fuck Howard, fuck Marvin, nigga. Fuck the click and the shit you claim. We bust on bad boys, nigga. Man, hell no. I'm trying to make a finale, baby. I'm trying to turn this shit up. I'm not trying to have any doubt in any viewer's mind that this is the finale. Man, Kanan should have picked that 500000 up and told Rock, get the fuck out of here. You killed that nigga Marvin. Uh, I'm mean, not Marvin. You killed that nigga Howard. Y'all get the fuck out of here. That 500 is mine. You figure that shit out with that nigga goddamn Stefano, nigga. I killed Ronnie. You ain't got no motherfucking problem. What? This nigga about to just go home and live a regular life? Come on, man. That's about to be wacky shit in season four. This nigga going home and got a goddamn curfew. This shit about to be whack as a motherfucker. If I was that nigga Kanan, I would have wrote that nigga Kanan picking up the 500000 and had the Thule on it. Like, get the fuck out of my face. You killed this nigga Howard. You killed my fucking father. Get the fuck out of here. Man, this is the finale. This ain't no goddamn episode three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the finale. Put some bodies on the motherfucking floor. I'm taking the $500,000. That shit should go to Kanan. All this, you coming with us, Kane? I'm coming with you, motherfuckers. Look, you put the goddamn fucking gun in my bag. I no disrespect, mom. I love you, but bitch, you put a goddamn gun in my bag. I'm not about to come live with you, niggas. The fuck you, niggas? I set up this whole goddamn play for me to come live with you, niggas. Fuck that. 500000 is mine. If you niggas want problems, nigga, come talk to Snaps about that shit. Fuck you. Fuck Marvin, nigga. This is the finale. They talking about come live with us. Man, get the fuck out of my face, man. This ain't no goddamn finale. This is goddamn season two, episode three. This shit weak as a motherfucker. I'm taking the $500,000. Fuck Rock. Fuck that nigga Marvin. Fuck Howard. Fuck Ronnie. I'm teaming up with this nigga unique, nigga. What's up, nigga? Snaps putting money in my pocket. Make some fucking action. This shit weak as a motherfucker. I ain't coming down. I ain't coming down. I ain't coming down. Fuck Rock. Fuck Marvin. Fuck Howard. Fuck Ronnie. Fuck them all. $500,000, nigga. I'm taking the $500,000 every day of the week, nigga. It could be Mo versus the world. Fuck them. This is the finale. This is the finale. Fuck them. Slut is shit. I love power. I love power. This is the finale. Y'all want y'all want a nigga to walk off holding hands. This ain't Valentine's Day. This is the finale. Come on. This is the finale. This ain't. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Raymond Hope said this this Mo is drunk and emotional. First of all, I'm not drunk. I'm a thousand percent sober. Secondly, I'm putting on the show. Third of all, why would Kanan pass up $500 to go back with his mom? Now, you can go ahead and ask me any question. We'll see if Mo is drunk or not, or if Mo knows exactly what the fuck is going on. So you have the floor, present a question to me, and I'll go ahead and give you the realest answer you can get. And I'll be waiting on your response. Because if you ain't seen me drunk, you you ain't seen a nigga drunk. A nigga, I'm 100% sober right now. Go ahead and ask a question. I'll give you the realest answer to him. We'll be waiting. Uh, Raymond, we'll be waiting.
Now I know you playing. I know you playing, but hey, I'm playing too. That's what I'm saying. You playing, I'm playing. I'm like, man, fuck that. Man, make this nigga Kane and get some action. Fuck Rock. Fuck Marvin. Fuck them all. Nigga, $500,000. Dog, if I wrote this shit, this nigga Kane and is running off with that 500 bands. Rock and goddamn Marvin will be trying to get that shit back in season four. Back in blood. Shout out to Pew. Uh, uh, not Pew. Pew Shiesty. Fuck that shit. 500,000. This nigga Kane and just saved his mom's life. Fuck that. I'm taking the 500,000, man. Make this shit interesting. Turn this motherfucker up. We got four, we got the four easiest, the four cheesiest, the four weakest deaths ever. Oh, we shoot Ronnie in the back of the head. Pow. We shoot um uh Howard in the back of the head. Pow. We shoot two. What? This nigga Marvin was on top of the roof. How the fuck did Marvin get in the warehouse and shoot two niggas in their back? How? Someone, please, explain to me how. This shit was weak. It was weak. It was weak. Dog. This, listen. Look, look at Marvin. Where is Marvin at? Marvin is on top of the roof. Look at Marvin's last point of view before they went into the warehouse. Marvin is on top of the fucking roof. How the fuck did Marvin get in there in 10 seconds down to the bottom floor and shoot two niggas in the back? How? How? I know it's TV. And I know, you know, niggas do what they do. But How? They keep telling me that Raising Canaan is the most realistic shit that we got. How the fuck did this nigga get from the roof to the goddamn warehouse floor and shoot two niggas in the back? How? This nigga is on the roof like he's a goddamn sniper. How? <laughs> Belisha said he snuck in while they were talking. They only talked for one minute. They only talked for one minute. Howard even said we ain't come here for the conversation. 